You know, as a practicing climbing arborist, I consider myself very, very fortunate to live in an area of California where we have such magnificent trees. Many of the old oaks, including this old Quercus lobata, valley oak, are so significant that, that they just make the whole landscape. But then you start looking at what has happened to the tree over the history of this tree's lifetime. And clearly, we've got something going on here that is, well, it, it's quite unusual. So one of the first things that you have to consider when evaluating a tree is the question, what are the client's concerns? Why are you there? Is it fear? Are they just asking for your opinion without any concerns? Clearly there's something going on here that has the client worried. Those limbs right there, right off the bat, I'm thinking, who would leave such low branches? Obviously somebody that doesn't drive a truck, but she wanted to keep those. I got up into the tree with the bucket truck and started looking at some of the old cavities. And you start looking at the history of what's happened to a tree. You know, you, you can kind of read back and, and look at every wound and every cut and every cable and, you know, the, the raised grade and the root crown excavation that went place. And, and somebody put a deck over the entirety of that tree. And the multiples of cables, you know, in many, many places, there's many cables. And, and, and you have to ask yourself, how many of these cables are really necessary? How many people have worked on this tree? How many different cable styles do you see? So how many of them are, are ancient? How many of them have been replaced? And, and, and how many of them were installed just because somebody was trying to make money off of the client? Don't let emotions influence your inspection process. The client told me that she absolutely loved this tree, and I'm sure she's told every other tree service in the past 27 years that she's lived here how much she cares about this tree. And I believe that a lot of the decisions about excessive cabling came from the fact that they really, really wanted to save the tree. Understand what it means to protect the branch bark ridge or the branch collar as well as understand what happens when you make a flush cut. Really look closely at the history of what work that you can tell has been done to the tree. Not only do you want to look at the old wounds, but you want to look at all the cabling that has been installed and you know anything else such as the root crown excavation. How long ago did this happen? Ask the client how old the house is. Ask the client how long they've lived in this house. Ask them about the history of what they know has been done to the tree and possibly if they know work that's been done before they bought the house. These are all really important questions because sometimes the, the wounds on a tree can be evaluated based upon their age. You know, just because a wound has completely sealed up and compartmentalized, you don't know what's underneath that top surface. Now look closely here. You see some old through rods that were cabled a long time ago. You can see where a cable was installed where it's actually rubbing on the bark. Now I took the time to take the old deck surface off because I told her I needed to get down there to really look closely. So I got in there with a chainsaw and just cut it up and got out of there. So I want you guys to take a close look at the base of the tree. Don't jump to conclusions. It's really easy to say, oh my God, look at that mess. That thing's got to go right now. You know, take your time and really look closely. You have to look at the weaknesses, but you also have to look at the strengths. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to tell this client that the tree is safe or that I'm going to recommend keeping it or even that I'm going to say this tree's got to go. But what I am doing is I'm taking the time to really closely inspect everything. I got down there on my hands and knees and looked up on inside and, and, and she told me that she paid someone to take out all the old punky tissue. So the dead decaying wood in there is relatively hard. 
But does that mean that that decayed wood adds to the strength of the structure? No, I don't think so. You know, so you also got to look at the areas of connectivity of decay. If you've got a spot where one part of the tree's decay goes all the way through to the other side, you can extrapolate that it's very likely either rotted all the way up into the center of the trunk or that the tree may be becoming hollow. You've also got to look at the voids. Now this is interesting. At one time they decided that they wanted to put a deck around it so they hired someone to put concrete all the way around and they just completely encapsulated a lot of those roots in concrete. Well that's not good. Some of these airborne roots now as a result of the past root crown excavation um, are, are just floating in, in the air there and you can thump on them and feel that they're not very solid anymore either. You know, it, it's easy to look at something like this and, and jump to a conclusion and say, oh my God, this thing's got to go. But a very important part of this is you've got to step back and look at the entirety of the balance of this tree you can see that the left side's a bit heavier. I'd say it's probably 15, maybe 20% heavier than the right side. There's an old garage over there. So that's a clear target. But the house is where I'm standing. So the likelihood of failure is that it's going to go towards the house. Oh, this is fun. Remember the old game, Where's Waldo? Well, where's Jorge? Can you see him up there? There he is. Oh, man. We took off a lot of the limbs that were hanging over the back tree that was over the roof. We wanted to get rid of some of the weight. They have skylights back there. And once again, I was trying to emphasize more of a lightning on the house side and leaving more of the foliage on the back side. And you can see that uh, there, there's a lot of things that could happen here. They got a brand new roof. They got a couple of targets there, it's like the skylights. And once again, this tree has had some weird things happen to it. I hope you enjoyed this, and please subscribe to my channel, and uh, let's make some good tree decisions.